was trained as an artist um, in Edinburgh College of Art back in the 1970s. And uh, it was the love of landscape that really inspired me and in creating landscapes uh, in actuality. Uh, it was like painting the land itself. But uh, eventually I became very interested in creating landscapes for butterflies. Uh, it was developing my own meadow in my, in my back garden that taught me a lot about how to create these landscapes. Essentially what you do is you reduce the fertility of the soil which allows you to grow a wide range of uh, different flowers. But you also have the added advantage that uh, if you've removed some of the topsoil you can shape these landscapes you can shape whole areas of land into different shapes um, that are exciting for butterflies, um, specifically south-facing slopes. Landforms that are south-facing are some of the best places to find uh, butterflies. And we can create these landforms by shaping the soil. Uh, but we don't have to stop there because we can actually make great big Land, uh, uh, sculptures in the, in the, in the land, um, something they used to do back in prehistory. Uh, I'm thinking of places like uh, Avesbury and uh, Stonehenge, giant earthworks that, that you can create with modern means using bulldozers, diggers and dumpers. You can actually shape the land to be exciting to butterflies, but also you can make them into huge sculptures. So I have made in the past probably the largest dragon in the world. Uh, I've made houses for gnomes. I've made giant butterflies for butterflies to lay their eggs in. All things shaped uh, by changing the topography of the land. Clive Farrell is one of the pe people I've done a lot of work for and he was instrumental in developing butterfly world where a lot of these ideas have reached their fruition. We have created gigantic earthworks, uh, bigger than any of Neolithic man-made, um, but they're all designed and shaped for butterflies.